Hey folks, right, I thought I'd just put together a quick tutorial on using PixInsight batch pre-processing. Because um, I've heard a lot of people say PixInsight's really difficult. Um, now, I don't think it is when it comes to the batch pre-processing. It's as easy as anything, any other programs you use. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to show you how to produce this image. which took a couple of nights ago with my William Optics ZS81 and ZWO ASI183 mono. Um, now I didn't have much time so I only had one evening so what I decided to do was capture it using just a hydrogen alpha filter and an oxygen 3 filter to make a bicolor image um, in the colour palette H O O, so that's hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen. So into it. So if we open Pix in sight, first first thing we're going to do is go to script, and then batch pre-processing, and then come down to batch pre-processing. So this is our batch pre-processing script screen up here. Now all we have to do is add our lights. So I'm going to first of all add hydrogen alpha. So I've got 24 of these. So let's open those. You can see they're added in there under HA. So if we add some more light, we can grab our option three. So I've got 30 of these. And then I'm not using flats this time, but I'd recommend using flats. I'm just doing it, I'm not using flats because I'm lazy. Um, so what you do, you just add your flats in the same way. Um, but we are going to use darks. So I'm going to add my darks my darks folder. Now these are these say M101 that's just because I um, captured them in the sequence when I was uh, getting M101 but they're exactly the same settings so I'm going to use those. Um, using the ZWO cameras we do not want optimized dark frames. We do not want this at all. Okay. Um, don't need to CFA images because it's a mono camera. I think if you're using a colour camera or DSLR, yeah, check that. Right. Also, right, I'm not using any bias either um, because again, with the ZWO camera I'm using, it seems to cause a lot of problems and they don't recommend you use them anyway. So, we need to select a reference image. So go to this tab here, which is where your lights are. Now, I normally select one from the middle somewhere. So you just double click on it, and then that selects your reference image, which it's gonna register your stars in the um, processing script. Now, output directory. This is where all your images can go. So if we open the output directory up, this is a folder so far, so I've got my dark lights HA and O3. So I'm going to make a new folder and call it process. So double click on that, I'll just click on it and then select folder. Um, you can, if you click this, you just calibrate only, but for this video, I'm just going to do the whole process and script. So, image registration. I'm just leaving that as it is. So, the image integration. Because I've got more than eight images, I'm going to use Winsor Eyes Sigma Clipping and Combination Average. If I had less than eight images, I'd probably, or yeah, less than eight images, I'd use percentile clipping, and then if I've got under, say like 
15 or so, I can't remember how many it is, you see my clipping. Um, not used these before, so I can't comment on those. Um, these are default settings, so I'll just leave that as it is. And basically, all I click is run. Now, when you click run, you should probably get an error message come up. In this case, it's saying warning that bias frames have been selected. Well, I know about that, I'm not worried about that. And then flat frames have been selected. Again, we know about that because we're not using flats. Um, and this is again for saying the flat frames for the HA and the flat frames for the O3. So I'm just going to click continue. And that will just do its thing and start pre processing. So I'll, um, I'll let this run and I'll be back with you shortly. Right, so that's it, the script's run, um, so I'm going to exit this. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes. Okay. Uh, integration of light frames. That took 4 minutes 57 seconds on my computer, um, which is a fairly decent machine. It's got 32 gigs of RAM. Um, eight core processor, so yeah, so it's a pretty pretty decent PC. So you might you might find yours is either quicker or you might find it slower. Right, so now let's find our files. So we want to go file open, and where were we? We were. So, we find our process folder, and you can see there's 8.79 gigabytes in there now. So, we have our calibrated files. They've got the C prefix. Uh, we've got the logs, don't really have a bother with that. Masters. So, Yes, we've got our registered, which is all our, so it goes calibrated, registered, and aligned. So these are all in there, there are registered to the image we chose. Masters is where we find our master files. So we have our dark, we have our HA, and we have our O3. So I'm just going to open these two up, because these are the ones we're interested in. And you'll see there's six images opened up. So these are just the rejection maps. So we can just stretch these and just have a look. So these are the pixels which is rejected. Oh, that one. This is the one we want. So I can just put a, a stretch on that one. And go. That's O3. That's really, really strong in O3. Fantastic target. Again, this is HA. Rejection. And we will stretch HA stacked light. So again, I think on this one the O3 is actually stronger. Yeah, cool. Right, okay, so first things first, I'm going to crop the images. So what I want to do here is go process. Geometry, dynamic crop. So you get this window come up. Now, if I come over to here, I don't want to crop too much of the image off, but you can see the edges from the stack. So I want to make sure I exclude that. So I'm going to probably come in a little bit more than I want to. So probably like, like that. Now, I want to crop these both the same, I don't want to have to register them again. So if I pull this triangle to here, that will create this again. So now if I just tick that, this one is cropped. I can bring that one to the front. Now I can just drag this on here and it'll give me the exact same crop. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to delete this. Actually, I won't delete that. I'll leave that up there so we can see. Okay, so if you grab the bar and pull it down, you can just you can pull it over it and just make sure it does line up. So that's that. So that's the first step we've got. So now what I'm going to do, 
I'm just going to duplicate these. So you duplicate them by grabbing the tab on the side and just moving it and that will automatically create a duplicate. And then I put my originals, original cropped ones up there. So next thing to do, I'm not going to bother with any noise reduction I think at the moment because the date is quite good. I'm just going to keep this nice and simple and quick. So you can add in whatever pre-process and stuff you want to do. I'm not going to do a background extract on this yet. All I'm going to do is open up screen transfer function and the histogram transformation. So we want to put that back to normal. I'm going to reset these by clicking that corner, which is good practice because it might store in some settings from a previous um, image you were processing. So this little circle here opens up a preview window. Now this is the linear image so we want to stretch that to see what we've got. So this is our stretched image. Let's change that to maximum so we can see a bit better. Okay right now I want to put this stretch into the histogram so by doing that we'll grab this triangle and put it on this bar here. Now you say that's overstretched so if we reset this, now we can see the stretch we're going to put onto the image. Now I'm using a mouse wheel just to zoom into this one. I think the background's a little bit too bright, so I'm just going to grab the mid tones and just bring that down a little bit. Okay, well, I'm happy with that. So then what I'm going to do is just apply it. So that's that one applied. So this image is now non-linear and stretched. So we do the same with the HA. So I'm going to open up a preview, press the radio active button, and that will stretch it. I want to add that to the histogram transformation. Reset the screen stretch. And again, the background's quite bright, so I am going to reduce those mid tones. So it's similar to. Where are you? Let's yeah, so try and get it similar to the O3 brightness wise. Okay, all right, so I can apply that. Okay, so I'm going to apply this to the HA, just make sure the HA there, apply, reset the screen transfer, and there we have it. Okay. So here, are, here is my two stretched images. I'm going to rotate them quickly, so I just, um, I don't like it, it's upside down. <coughs> so again we go to geometry, 
fast rotation and then we've got rotate so if I just want to do 108 degrees I can just drag that onto there drag it onto there and there we go alright so the next process we need to do to create our colour image let's go to process down to colour spaces now I use LRGB combination so we're not using luminance so we can uncheck that now because this image I've only got HA and O3 what I'm going to do is I'm going to use HA for the red channel to make sure you get the right image so HA is the clone which we've been working on green is going to be the O3 clone image we're working on and blue is also going to be the O3 that's where we get the HOO image okay now I'm still not going to do any noise reduction on this because I do noise reduction with something else. So all we need to do now is just apply that using the little circle there. And you can see it chugging away, doing its thing. And there we go. So I'll minimize these. There is our HOO image. Easy as that.